gardeners, and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. We're here to talk about all things plants, insects, probably no animals, but all things of the landscape. So thank you for joining us. I'm Diane Nolan, and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department. And I'm here on the Urbana campus of the University of Illinois. But we have three really talented panelists. We're going to find out who they are and their expertise, and then we're going to answer some of your phone calls. So I'm going to throw it first to Ella Maxwell. Hi, Ella. Hi. I uh, work at Hare Nursery in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, my expertise is uh, perennials and some uh, information with trees and shrubs. And I have a show and share today of a small pumpkin here. Well, it's actually a gourd. And what you can do to enjoy it for, well, quite a long time is to take some sheet moss and you can just uh, glue this right on top of the pumpkin. And then you can take some cuttings from your succulents and then you use a tacky glue and you can just glue them into this and you're going to um, just mist it. And it's surprising, put it in a sunny window and uh, it will eventually root into the sheet moss and uh, you can have it for a number of months or until the pumpkin gourd goes bad, but usually they hold out pretty well. And I did bring a gourd, and this is a, a gourd snake that uh, <laughs> my daughter painted. This is called a long gourd, and I just thought it was uh, so cute. I ha told her I'd show it on TV today. It really is cute, and the way the tail, it grew so the tail yeah. moves up. That's yeah. Very well done. Thank you, Ella. And now we're going to send it over to Dave Plussard in the middle. Hi, Diane. Thank you. I'm the Garden Center Manager at Hare Nursery in Peoria, and I'm a certified arborist, so my expertise is in trees and shrubs. I have an uh, email question here uh, from Kathy in Champaign. Her question is, this weed has been coming up all over in a graveled area in my yard. Not sure how tall it gets, but I keep after it, pulling it up when it's a few inches tall. The leaves are tacky, sticky. Any ideas? It is not in the lawn, only in the graveled areas. Well, Kathy, this is a plant called Pennsylvania Pellatory, and I know that's a long name and a mouthful, but that's actually the common name. The Latin name's even worse, but uh, <laughs> it is uh, easy to pull up. It pulls up very easy. I have some in my own yard. I even, even brought some along with me. It doesn't, doesn't look the best. I noticed from your picture, um, that's how it looked in the spring, but this time of year it's kind of elongated. The leaves are a lot smaller, but it is actually still flowering, and it's, it'd be too hard on the camera to actually see the flowers. But uh, it does reseed itself very easily, so I encourage you to keep on pulling it. You want to keep it under control or it will spread. It, it tends to like it in a somewhat uh, shaded or slightly shaded area, and it grows all over the country. Uh, in all the 50 continental or 48 continental states as well as Canada. So it's uh, pretty prolific, but uh, it is easy to control. So Pennsylvania pellatory is what the plant is. Interesting. Ellen and I do not know that weed, probably because our gardens are weedless. Is that oh. why? Uh, yeah, yes. Karen, do you know that weed? No, I didn't know it. Our gardens must be weedless. That's why we don't know that one. I think I have every other weed, maybe. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Dave, for that. And now let's go to Karen Ruckel next. Hi, I'm Karen, and I am also uh, work at Hare Nursery in uh, Peoria. And at this time of the year, we usually talk about your house plants and bringing them in for the winter and, and the care for that. But what I wanted to talk about is some of your tender perennials or annuals that we use that you can overwinter and then have them for next year and bigger and more and divide them to have more plants in the yard. And probably my favorite is this um, black and this variety is called black and bloom salvia. That's an improvement over black and bloom salvia and the hummingbirds just love this in my yard so I love having it in the yard. And this plant was just a little start of a plant in spring I put it in a small pot so it's easier to throw in. I leave these perennials that are tender for me outside until probably Thanksgiving. 
and let them get pretty cold, start to go dormant, get some freeze on them, and then I move them into my unheated garage for the winter. The problem yeah, I always have is spring getting them back out because they usually sprout too early. But um, it, it's fun because you don't have anything to lose if you've got a spot in an unheated shed or garage that you can try. Now this is actually another salvia called Wendy's Wish um, Salvia. And this was in a big planter. And so I dumped it out and just took a saw and shaved off all the extra roots. And unfortunately the planter it was in where it was at didn't get watered so it was a little wilty. So I just whacked the whole plant back. But if I keep this, then I'll have a new plant and a larger plant than what you could buy in the garden center come springtime. Um, then another plant that does not do well in my garden is um, Agastanchi. This one's called Kudos Ambrosia. It always dies in my yard. And so I keep it in a pot and then I let it go dormant outside and then I move it into my garage. Every couple years, these perennials, I divide them like you would like the perennials in your yard. And I don't put them in pots probably less than 14 inches. So, you know, they're, they're good size pots. And um, that way I, I kind of save money a little bit because I'm a plant hoarder, so it doesn't probably matter much. But um, some of my favorite plants, I've got plenty of them. I give them to friends, and I have extra to plant in the yard or have in pots. That plant security of always having lots of plants yeah, around. Got to have good. a couple extra of your favorites. Just in mm -hmm. case. Good job. Thank you for that primer on how to keep some plants going. That's very good. Well, we're going to go to a special segment next called Did You Know? The rose was adopted as England's flower emblem during their Civil War from 1455 to 1485. Roses symbolize two warring factions in England. Red roses symbolize the Lancaster faction, while white roses symbolize the York faction. This clash became known as the War of the Roses. Horticulture is very important down through history. Very interesting. Okay, let's go to the phone lines and see what Don has to ask us on line two, and it's about butterfly bush. But Don, what's your question? Thank you for taking my call. Um, I have a butterfly bush that, that um, I did not cut back last fall. And are, and, uh, are you there? You're doing good. Ma'am? Keep talking. Okay. And uh, I did not cut it back last fall. Well, this year it's over six feet tall. It probably takes four people joining hands to go all the way around it. It just load has been loaded with blooms all summer and bunches of butterflies. What I want to know is, should I cut it back this fall after we have a frost? Okay, so I don't know if Dave wants to answer that oh, or Karen. Ella or Karen. Karen has butterfly bushes or at her house. All three at once. She has great, great I insight. Have one. Does that well, count? I, I think with a, a lot of your plants, and especially a plant like that that's kind of more of a woody, in, in some areas down in, in this area of, of central Illinois, Champaign area down south, it's more of a woody shrub plant. I would wait for a lot of your pruning till spring. So just leave it alone. And then come spring, depending on how rough the winter is, you're going to have some dieback anyway. So even if you prune it this fall, and if we have a severe winter, you're going to have dieback again, and you're going to have to prune it again. So I would, I, my best advice, or what I've found what's best with them, is just not do anything, wait till spring, and then cut it back to the appropriate size that you want it just about when it's starting to re-sprout for the springtime. And when you don't? Cut it back. It will become humongous, won't it? Well, if it doesn't your, die. Yeah, for your area. Now, in, like in, Not every for year. us in Peoria, they typically die down to wherever you have the mulch. Mm -hmm. So they normally, for us, stay more of a herbaceous and perennial. I think it's one in four or five years that they don't die back here. This was just a nice winter. But I, I think yeah. another thing to keep in mind when you've got an oversized plant is when you trim it back hard next spring, you'll want to do a second pruning because you, you'll trim it back pretty far and it'll send out long growth. And then you're kind mm -hmm. of back to that same quick size. So trim it back half of what that new growth is to have it bushier and take it back and to contain it better. 
And I think that's a yeah. mistake a lot of people do. Yeah. They'll prune it really hard and they think, oh, I'm done. But you really need to do a slight pruning that second time with that new flush of growth. Good advice. That's a good, good tip. So there's your butterfly bush uh, ideas. And we thank you for your question. Let's go to David's question on line three about a Norfolk Island pine. Hi, David. I heard something click. Are you there? Hello? Hi, are you David? Yes. We are ready for you. I have a Norfolk pine in a pot and I would like to bring it in for the winter and I'm looking for advice on how to do that. Okay. Well, I have a, a sunroom and you just need a bright spot for the Norfolk Island Pine. You can leave it in the pot that it's currently growing in and you're just going to bring it in this fall. You might make sure that there aren't any insects, uh, no spider mites or anything like that on it and uh, bring it in before it, the night temperatures dip into the uh, middle to low 30s and uh, that might be in the coming weeks and enjoy it as a house plant inside, bright window. Mm -hmm. I would say that's pretty well true for most any of the house plants that you wanna bring in. So mm -hmm. that's good general advice. Okay, thank you very much for your question. And we're gonna move on to line four. Joe has a question about boxwoods. Hi, Joe. Line four. Thank you. Let's go to line five and we'll see what this question is. Uh, it's about tender annuals. Hi, line five. Hi, um, I was wondering if you could do that with Lantana, what the lady said about cutting them down and putting them in the, um, your garage or somewhere. Anna. Ellie, you said you yeah. overwinter your I, Lantana. Where do you have it at? Well, m for my Lantana, I actually have it in a large pot that I bring into again into the sunroom. So it does have leaves through the winter, but I know that you can uh, run it dry the way that Karen's talked about her salvia. So uh, certainly give that a try. I'm sure you'll be uh, well rewarded. It's a, it's a good way. Okay, so that's a lantana. We've had all kinds of, you can tell the season is getting colder. People wanna bring things in. Well, let's go to Lee's question. He's got a question on line six about butternuts. Hi, Lee. Uh, yes, uh, I would uh, like to find somebody that maybe has a mature butternut tree that's producing seed, and uh, I've been trying to propagate some of them. I've had a few that I've started, but I want to, haven't had any that grew for me the last two years, but I want to try it again this, this winter, plant the seed in the winter, and hopefully it'll come up in the spring. Does anyone have any um, expertise or advice for what he can do with butternut seeds? Is he wanting to germinate them? I wasn't completely sure. I on the think, question. yeah. To do it this he, he winter, does. You know, over he, the winter. He needs to find a source for the seed. And then once you have it, it would be like uh, hickories or um, walnuts or any of those. The, the most important thing is that you, uh, you have a viable seed. And the way that you can test that is you can take a number of seeds and float them in a bucket. And if they float, those are the ones not to plant because they probably uh, don't have a good um, uh, embryo inside, but if they sink, then you could go ahead and plant those. And the important thing is that they do need that cold period of, mm -hmm. of uh, stratification, and you want to protect them, maybe even bury them in a uh, chicken wire cage to keep the squirrels from uh, digging them up and, and using them or moving them or eating them. Okay. But I think you could uh, do quite a number of nuts that way, and acorns. I wonder if um, local master gardeners at a local extension, uh, your county local extension person could find out who has any butternut. You know, she, he needs a source, and yeah. he might want a local source. So you might go to your extension uh, service and see if they know of anyone who has that. 
I just had a lot of Buckeyes given to me, and you know, it's not the same, but people would maybe know. So if you wanna find a source, try your extension folks. And they'll say, oh, please don't tell us that. But if you know <laughs> someone named Lee, and he has, he wants some butternut um, seeds, give him those, so. <laughs> but I was given a whole sack of Buckeyes, and so I said, thank you. But Lee actually wants them, so let's go for it. Let's help him out. Let's go to uh, the panel next, and we're gonna go back to, e if you have an email or show and tell. We'll start with you, Ella. Oh, thank you. I had a question in regards to hydrangeas from uh, Gary. He has the Endless Summer Hydrangea, and it's been on the south side of his house. Um, it does get some sun. He planted it in 2012, and there were lots of blooms last year, but this year he hasn't really gotten any blooms. Um, he waters it daily. He uses the aluminum sulfate. Uh, that would help to make them more blue. And he also uses miracle Grow fertilizer, but no blooms. And his wife is saying that he probably is over-fertilizing. And I would have a tendency to agree with that. These uh, re-blooming hydrangeas, the macrophylla type with the large um, panicle or the large ball bloom of colored flowers uh, can be on old wood but then also on new wood and if he's getting a lot of growth it might be that uh, it's at the expense of the flowers although usually those are at the terminal so the most important thing I think with those types are uh, the pruning practice you want to uh, not necessarily prune them to the ground because you're cutting off that first flush of blooms and then I would just uh, wait and just fertilize after they've bloomed, not during the flowering time. Any other ideas? Well, I, I was concerned when he mentioned that he watered it every day. Can, you know, he can't go on vacation then. So, <laughs> you know, not, not having a, a plant so dependent on watering. Now my, my endless hydrangea, remember I called it this spring endless disappointment. Mm -hmm. And if we had one more month of growing season, it's covered with blooms right now, <gasps> but some of them, it, oh. you know, I need four more weeks. And so once again, it's still a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> An endless one? Yeah. <laughs> but it did get the moisture that it needed, but too late. Well, I think, I think we had a lot of moisture in spring. So I'm, I, oh. I've tried, so I've tried just... different fertilizer, water, not water, extra mulch, not extra mulch. Oh. So, so you've done all you can do. Yeah. And that way you can stay disappointed. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for <laughs> that, Ella. Let's go next to yours, Dave. Well, I am not disappointed. Um, oh, good. Good <laughs> I segue. Have, I have brought in some bittersweet that I uh, actually cut from my own yard, and I have bittersweet growing. Bittersweet is a vine. Um, some people may remember seeing it along fence rows where mm -hmm. it would grow along a fence. A bird probably had dropped the seed at some point. Um, we don't see a lot of it anymore, but it really is a wonderful fall decoration. And uh, consequently, I thought this would be a good time to be bringing it in. Uh, this particular plant is called uh, Autumn Revolution. And the benefits of this particular bittersweet is one, it has very large uh, fruit on it, so they're they're very nice size. And secondly, is that it pollinates itself. With other bittersweet, you really need to have a male bittersweet with the other female bittersweet in order to get good fruit produ production. So American Revolution or Autumn Revolution basically is one that you do not have to plant more than one. You actually could just plant one of it. But really, to, to get really nice fruit and be able to use it, I have about five of them. Wow. And, uh, and they do grow rather fast, so you really do need something to grow uh, them on. I just uh, point out that this is one that I uh, picked uh, along with it, and these have not opened yet. So it kind of looks like an orange berry initially, and you can actually cut these earlier in the year and dry them, and then they will pop open to expose that red berry mm. in the center. So it's a pretty easy plant to grow. I have not had any problems with them in about, oh, six or seven years that I've been growing them. And so I would encourage for fall decoration that you give this plant a try. Boy, and I'm the sold. important thing about that is this is the American um, 
native species. You want to avoid any of the Chinese bittersweet. It's a little bit different flowering mm -hmm. or fruiting habit. And um, it's not the oriental one is not near as pretty and it's right. also much more aggressive. So the American one is what you want to get. Okay, very good. Very impressive looking plant. Okay, now Karen. I have an email question from Jeff and he is talking about a uh, red rubecchia and he states that it looks as though next year is here for the cubs and this was sent in the beginning of september so he didn't even know at that point that they were going to clinch the pennant but he's growing some red rubecchia from the seed but it's having difficulty getting them spaced out or spread out he needs to transplant them can he do it this fall or instead of waiting till spring yes the sooner the better for transplanting perennials the only problem we sometimes see with a fall transplant, or at least I've had experience, is if we get really wet falls and, and you didn't get enough roots with it, you, you can have some difficulty and more stress for the plant. So sometimes spring is a little better, but certainly if you're needing to do that work now and don't have time next spring, uh, go ahead and move them with as much soil as you can and um, mulch them once, once we go a little colder. Okay, very good, thank you. Well, let's go to Joe's question on line three, and it's about boxwood. Hi, Joe. Hi, Diane. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. I've got a client that has got boxwoods that are overgrown for their bed. And what I was wanting to know, do you know of anyone that has taken it back to the wood and they survive? Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I let mine just get out of control, and I mm -hmm. reined them in. But go mm -hmm. ahead and give a little bit of hint for him. Well, I did the same thing. Now, I, I will say that some of the branches that I cut back that heavily did not re-sprout, but uh, I did not lose the plants. There were enough that they uh, sprouted from around. Um, it's better if you don't let them get quite that big. and. I actually have some rather old ones, and I cut them back halfway rather than mm -hmm. completely down. So uh, I didn't get quite the die back that I did when I really cut them back heavy. So uh, if you cut them, do it in kind of in stages. Cut them back about halfway, and then later you can cut them down again. That's what I would recommend. And you can do it now. You can do it in the spring. Either one would be fine. Okay, so that's encouraging for him. Think of it. Yeah. Pardon? Do you know what the recovery time would be? Is six months, a month, two oh, months? Oh, it will, it will take Years. quite a bit of time, yeah. It's going to, well... Uh, I have been working on mine for three years. They were probably uh, three and a half feet tall, so I cut them back halfway. They are looking good now after uh, three years, but it took about that time. So the bigger the plant and the harder that you cut it back, the longer it's going to take for them to recover, and it will not be overnight. Uh, it will not be in a single season, single season, or even two years. So if you want to take them back maybe a fourth yeah. and do some of the sides, you could maybe take them down slower and mm -hmm. it would not, it would yeah. jump back. You well, know. you could take them out and start over. That's, That's what I'd recommend. That is true as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just liked the challenge of getting <laughs> mine back. And I was doing that at the same time I was doing some hollies and I was cutting back Father Gee. I was doing the whole bed and mm -hmm. they, they did come back. Surprising but. how they, they mm -hmm. do come back. And I was very pleased with how my boxwood came back, but you just have to realize it's not going to be quick. And so if it is harsh, it takes longer. The less harsh, the less you'll notice it. So mm -hmm. depends on what you want to accomplish and how many years to accomplish. So you may have to wait for it to look good. So anyway, that was fun. We always like a answering pruning questions. <laughs> I'm telling you, the show really goes fast, doesn't it? It's amazing. Yes. There's so much to do um, in the fall, and so get out there and get some bulbs planted. Um, probably, I would say, what other, besides raking, let's not talk about that, but what else would you do just, you know, to get ready for the winter and, and quickly? Well, you can do it. You can do transplanting now. Transplanting. Mm -hmm. um, you can do dividing of your perennials. Yes. Some of them. Yep. Good time. Some to of do them. That. That's and 
it's a little late for sowing grass seed, but you can do a lot of things that... And you can really dormant plant grass seed, so yes. it could be done now, yeah, but it could. probably won't come up till next year. So there's yeah, a lot of I'm, things. I'm doing weed control. Yes, yes, this is a good time for weed control. Mm -hmm. Last opportunity. Yeah. I'm coming out that and taking some of my asters that have gone almost to seed, and I'm trimming some of those back so I don't have 800, you know, in the same spot next year. So mm -hmm. you can mulch, trim back a few things. Mowing. And you certainly mulch. can still plant, so don't yes. worry about planting trees and shrubs. That's right. So mm -hmm. anyway, we're getting you psyched up for doing more, and it's we've got a lot of nice days left to go. Well, we want to thank each of you for watching. I want to thank you three for all your expertise in bringing all these fun show and tells. You can never have enough show and tells. So we hope that you'll get out there. There's lots of things to do still in the fall, but have a great time doing it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.